Hi, good afternoon, guys. Um, you know, we had a, obviously a fun, exciting win this past weekend and against a very good football team, and especially in front of our home crowd, which was uh, fun to see and, um, you know, just feeding off those guys and their energy. But I uh, got obviously a tough matchup coming up this week, and we're looking forward to the challenge. What did you like about the way that Greg Joseph bounced back? You know, I thought it was great. I mean, um, but I expect that out of him. Uh, you know, I wasn't surprised by any means because uh, I know how talented he is. And, uh, you know, so he came back in, and uh, it was great to go ahead and see him rebound and, you know, expect that to happen all the time. And uh, so I wasn't surprised by any means, though. It was, it was good to see. Ryan, a lot of people obviously talk about Kevin Stefanski this week, but this one obviously has a, a connection for you, too, with Mike Prefer on the other side. What is it like to prepare against his units and just know you're going to be coaching against him on Sunday? Yeah, I mean, just uh, taking away the, you know, Coach Prefer and everything out of the whole uh, dynamic of everything. I mean, it's a, they're a very good football team and uh, a good special teams unit, very sound and disciplined, and they play with a lot of energy and they're really fast, and we got to go ahead and make sure it's about us. You know, yeah, it's going to be, you know, there's some faces over there that are familiar, but that's with any other opponent as well, but uh, we just got, it's about our team and uh, what can we do to get our players playing fast and meet that matchup and and be able to help our team win the, the, the field position and ultimately the game. Does it take on any significance for you just given how long you coached with him and kind of working as his assistant special teams coordinator for a long time? No, I mean, it was obviously a, he's, he was an integral part, integral, uh, excuse me, uh, instrumental part of my, uh, you know, development as a special teams coordinator and or special teams coach at the time. And, uh, you know, I learned a lot of special teams, so I owe a lot to him. But at the end of the day, no, I mean, it's it's really about this football team, our players, how we can go ahead and, um, you know, win the field position battle and win those one-on-one matchups to be able to help our team win the game. But that's that's what it boils down to. And that's how it is every uh, every week for us. Ryan, did you have a chance to get Kane any work on kickoff return yesterday? I know he just returned to practice. Yes, yeah, yesterday we didn't we didn't practice the kickoff return, but uh, you know he did. He looked you know pretty fast out there, seeing him playing offense and defense. And uh, yeah, as we as he continues to get a couple more practices under his belt, we'll uh, start in, integrating him into our um, you know that stuff. But that's still yet to be determined here. I see how he uh, shows up today. Well, Ryan, he might not have been as effective again in Seattle as in other games, but just D.D. Westbrook, your thoughts on how it's working out with him returning punts for you guys? You know, I mean, he's excited to have back there. And, you know, he has some juice. That I think he's uh, he's a threat every time he touches the ball to go ahead and uh, be an exp- have an explosive return if not take it uh, the distance. And, you know, so that's good to have on our, on our side. And uh, and I've been pleased with him. I mean, obviously, there's a couple of coaching points that we're going to go ahead and continue to um, correct and everything. But I think I've been I've been happy and pleased with what he's done so far. And and we're just going to continue to build on what uh, we've done the first three weeks. And hopefully, we continue to have some more success. So what are those coaching points that you're? And just when to, knowing the situation, you know, when to field it, when not to field it. But uh, I mean, he's got great composure back there catching it, and he has a good feel in the game. And the, the great thing about him is that he wants to make a play and he's aggressive about it, but we just got to know the situation and, uh, you know, when the time comes for us to go ahead and return those and uh, when not to. The Browns return game with, with the rookie Felton in there, what have you seen from him? Uh, I mean, he's a, he's a very uh, dynamic returner. He, he kind of reminds me of a little bit of uh, Marcus Sherrill's, you know, pretty, pretty shifty, explosive. He's got that one cut and uh, he can really get to his top end speed very quickly. So we got our uh, work cut out for us uh, to go ahead and uh, making sure we do a great job in coverage. But uh, he's done pretty well so far uh, as a rookie returner. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a great challenge for us as a cover unit. What did you think of Jordan Berry's final punt? In the Seattle game, was, we call those, those are those game-winning punts, you know, towards the end where we got to make sure. I mean, he had great get off to get that thing out of there when we knew they were going to be rushing us, and um, you know, it was just great job getting it off with the off time and then being able to pin it inside there was was fun to watch. Uh, and it really helped with the field position towards the end of the game. Does, does he have sort of a, a knack for for bending the ball like that's unique? To, to him? Yeah, different. I mean, he's got a little bit in that. I mean, just from the, you know, the Aussie rules and him playing down there, I mean, he's got a lot of um, bags in his, or tricks in his bag, so to speak. So, I mean, he does a good job with some of those um, those situational kicks, and uh, we'll continue to work on those. But, no, it was, it was fun to see, and uh, was, I, was, I was happy for the guys and for him to go ahead and be able to ex- execute that, you know, that situation at a high level. What did you think of just the reaction on the field from his teammates? I mean, it seemed like that. It was like they were celebrating a touchdown. I mean, there was just like a huge celebration there. Yeah, I mean, it's it was. I thought it was great because I mean, everyone how excited everyone is actually involved with special teams. And I mean, these these players. I mean, we have a great roster and a great team, and how they support one another, not just you know special teams, but offense and defense. And it's great to see that. And that's part of what you know what coaches built here. Uh, but um, you know, I mean, the, everyone's involved in it. Everyone is, you know, feels it's a part of them, and um, you know, so I thought it was great to see that, and just everyone rallying, you know, behind one another, especially behind him. But you know, I mean, that's 
every we expect our players in those situations to come through, and uh, and that's what he did. And um, you know, we're, we're we're proud of that and to be able to win the football game. Is it becoming increasingly more risky to bring the ball out on on kick return to the point where you can like gain yards beyond the twenty five? And, and risky. It, well, I mean, just just so far this year, like when you guys have returned it and when your opponents have returned it, it seems like it's been pretty difficult to get it past the 25. Yeah. Is that, is that becoming, like, are, the, are we going to see fewer and fewer returns, you think, in the you know, future? I, I think it just depends on the situation. It depends on the team who we're playing. Um, you know, cer certain teams you're going to want to challenge. Uh, their kickoff return units, certain teams you're going to want to go ahead and bring it out a little bit deeper when we're on kickoff return. So it just depends on the game plan, the situation. Um, but also it depends on what, what play is called or where the ball is kicked. Uh, knowing the situation as a returner, when and when not to bring it out, and we gotta make sure we do continue to do a, a you know better job and communicate with them when to bring it out and when not to. Uh, but I think it's all depends on the game plan. Do you disaggregate like the results of a kick return from the decision to bring it out itself? Like uh, two games ago, I think Amir Smith Marset returned it from like two yards deep in the end zone. That used to be a definite go call. But it only got to like the 18 or something like that. Is that something where you're like, well, maybe you should have read the blocks better and decided to kneel? I mean, it's a little bit of that, but it also depends. Like I said, I mean, if there's a certain uh, return call, then it's kicked in a certain direction. Um, sometimes we don't have the best angles for those kind of returns, and so he want we want him to use a better judgment to go ahead and uh, make sure we don't bring those out. Or, you know, there might be a situation where it's exactly what we're looking for, and yeah, he might be two or three yards deep, and we want him to bring it out. So, it's just about him just learning those uh, those situations and him, um, you know, working through that stuff as a as a young returner. And uh, I don't see you know moving forward. Hopefully, uh, we don't have any of those those kind of issues. But that's just part of a learning process right now, and we're, we're gonna we got to correct it. Do you get data on that? Like how how deep you can be, and then have a likelihood of getting it out to the twenty five. Uh, I mean, yeah, you get we get those uh, we data, but I also think it's also um, you got to play to the strengths of your return unit. Uh, who's the returner? How explosive they are? I mean, you have a Cordero Patterson, or you know, you have guys like explosive guys like Smith Marset though, or Kane. I mean, they can still bring it deeper, but it all depends on the situation and when we probably want to bring it out and when we want uh, want to you know keep it in. Uh, but yeah, you get data in terms of um, you know likelihood of you. You know, bring it out past the 25 if you catch it six or seven deep. Uh, you know, obviously the coverage units is a little bit deeper in their coverage, and you don't have as much spacing as you uh, to get on the blockers and uh, get those lanes going. So yeah, you get a lot of that, and that comes into play with a lot of those analytics and everything. But at the end of the day, we just got to make sure uh, we understand those situations so we can go ahead and handle them and get on our blocks and uh, have those explosive returns.